Hey, good evening. Good evening. Cindy Baker here, ADHD productivity coach. And uh, I'm so excited to be here with you. We're going to talk about um, kind of an unusual topic. Instead of uh, attention deficit disorder, we're going to talk about intention deficit disorder. And so um, if you are jumping on live, if you could say hi in the chat, whatever platform you're watching this on, um, a lot of people watch the replay. So if you're watching the replay, uh, let me know you're here. Just say hi. Let me know where you're tuning in from. Um, and so again, I hope you are having a, a great Monday so far. Um, we're going to talk about uh, something that is um kind of different. Uh, I have never really um, heard this term until this year, but it's called the intention deficit disorder, ADHD brain intention deficit disorder. So why, um, why do ADHD minds struggle to meet goals with action? Um, that's really what we're, we're getting into tonight. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So intention deficit disorder, it's not a, a real medical diagnosis, but it's just a helpful way to frame a persistent ADHD challenge. And that is the inability to, uh, to move towards your goals with timely action. Um, you know, when you have ADHD, you have executive function deficits in your brain uh, and that that gives rise to intention deficits. Um, so uh, this was, I think that Dr. Russell Barkley was the first one to talk about this. And so uh, some of what I'm going to share with you was part of his um, lecture. I don't I don't know where the lecture was, but <laughs> uh, anyway, you've got things like. Um, fatigue and procrastination and um, time management issues and things like that. And so um, intention deficit disorder is just a term used to describe a, a central struggle of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. Um, and it's just an, a, a difficulty in accomplishing your goals. So think of ADHD uh, instead of an attention disorder, it's a performance disorder. So you may um, you may have attention, you just aren't doing what you intend to do, what you want to do. So people with ADHD, they know what they need to do, but they struggle greatly at times to transform intention into action <clears throat> excuse me sorry so you know whether that's preparing for a test or um finalizing an important project at work things like that it's an issue directly tied to the executive function difficulties that are inherent in adhd um you know a lot of times this this is a very real challenge and a lot of times it is mistaken for laziness or a lack of motivation. Um, and when people are labeled as lazy or unmotivated, it, it contributes to low self-esteem and sometimes even depression. And so um, some people are, are kind of carrying this with them uh, from their childhood. Layla, come here. It's my dog. Sorry. You have to let Banjo come up here. I have a, a young dog and an old dog and the old dog was trying to come up the stairs and the young dog was like stalking him and I was afraid he's going to fall down the stairs <laughs> so I had to move her um so let's let's unpack this a little bit intention deficit disorder it's the ADHD struggle to perform you've got executive uh, dysfunction and that affects behavior and performance um, it, it's self-regulation, really, that's the problem. That's inherent in the ADHD uh, executive function deficits or, or the, the mental skills that allow us to initiate and carry out actions toward a, a goal, a future goal. Um, the executive system 
it's in the brain's frontal lobe right here. And it's responsible for putting into action um, the knowledge that, that actually lives in the back of the brain. So ADHD separates these two parts of the brain like a, like a meat cleaver, you know, uh, in ADHD brains, intention and action are not connected. They're disconnected. And this is why people with ADHD seem unlikely, unable, unwilling to carry out behaviors that they know are good for them or that they know will help them reach their goals. Um, and it's often why they're they're not able to effectively act on what they know. So it's not so much that they don't know what to do. They just really have a struggle. And it's not that they don't want to do it even, but they have struggled doing it. Uh, executive dysfunction really messes with your time management. Um, you've heard you might have heard the term time blindness <clears throat> when it comes to ADHD. So you've got issues with time and timing and timing of behavior and all that kind of stuff. And so people with ADHD are, in essence, t blind to time. They see it in a different way and they struggle to organize large um, like uh, behaviors that have to be sequenced over across time. They struggle with that. Which ones are more important? Which one should come first? Those are those are things they struggle with, and so it you know having this intention deficit turns everything into a crisis, because people with ADHD are nearsighted to time, so they wait until the last minute. You know they wait until the future is imminent to take action because they see things as that are in the future as not now, and they don't have any sense of. Um, getting ready for the future. <clears throat> so, so long as they perceive the future to be, you know, out there, then they've got this outlook of, well, I don't have to deal with it yet, you know, and maybe you've experienced this. So you've got this universal experience of procrastination, which is huge with ADHD people. You've got this far away feeling of future events. And that means that people with ADHD are often unable um, to take action ahead of time. They did, they're only taking action at the 11th hour when time is, is almost running out and uh, it's a race to make a deadline. <clears throat> and they may, you know, throw things together in a haphazard manner at the last minute um, or they may actually deliver high quality work, but they almost killed themselves to get it done on time. <clears throat> so it's a, there's a cost that they pay of burnout and exhaustion. <clears throat> so you've got um, the inability to organize and prioritize. Um, you've got uh, trouble with the future, preparing for the future. Um, and so it just means everything it becomes a crisis inevitably with this too near deadline. Um, you know, and I mentioned earlier, it looks like laziness to other people <clears throat> because future directed behavior is intentional. You have to be intentional to um, move towards a goal in the future, right? So when there's this, this big gap between intention and action, that's where you get that term intention deficit disorder. And that feels a lot more accurate than a 10, than ADHD, you know, because um, because we it's, it's not that we don't have um, attention. A lot of people without ADHD have very little patience for um, the short sighted decisions of people with ADHD sometimes and they they look you know that to them the outcome is avoidable it's like you should have done something about this so they think the person is just lazy or careless or they just don't manage time well they're not motivated in, in other words it's just a moral failure instead of what it really is which is executive dysfunction in the brain so um 
a lot of people um, think that to fix this, you just have to build skills. And I do teach skills and strategies, ADHD friendly ones. And those are important. Um, you know, you, you need to learn strategies for motivating yourself and, and managing your time and things like that. Uh, but that's not the only thing that you need to bridge that gap between intention and action. Um, you know, neuropsychology, uh, they know that the best way to treat a, a, a performance um, a performance disorder or an executive disorder is by targeting the point of performance or the place and time across various settings in a person's life where they're failing to act on what they know. And so targeting the point of performance, it just, it, it, it means changing environments to facilitate that performance. So um, let's see if I can explain that a little better. Um, so that time blindness, um, because they don't see the, they don't have the internal cues for time, then external representations of time are very, very handy. Things like calendars, whiteboards, um, visual timers, uh, reminders, electronic reminders, post-it notes, you know, uh, things like that can help guide behavior more reliably and effectively. <clears throat> and that may sound like, well, duh, you know, but to an ADHD person, a lot of times they think that their brain is going to accurately view time. And so you have to, you have to bring in those external cues to make sure they're on track. Um, so, you know, bringing, it's bringing the future to the present. If people with ADHD tend to wait until the future is imminent, like a deadline to, to act, then, then you push that future back a few notches and that helps spur them into action. Um, so one way that I suggest doing this is dividing long-term goals into smaller uh, steps. And in that way, you're ensuring constant action to an overall goal. So if you have a big project, break it up into chunks and make the first step have a deadline that's, that's soon because that gets you going. And you can ensure motivation along the way you know, breaking up those tasks into manageable chunks. Um, and then um, it, it's almost like the momentum kicks in. Um, they kind of have, um, I don't know, what do they say? The, uh, something in motion stays in motion or something like that. But once, the, once you get over that initial discomfort of getting started towards that first step, then it starts to, to um, have momentum. And uh, another really important thing to, to remember is that you need to take short breaks, short breaks in between longer bursts of work. Um, some people with ADHD like to have a body double, which is just another person in the room or near, you know, could be on zoom who is, also working on something and you might do the same uh, Pomodoro time block together, but you're working on different things, or maybe you're working on the same thing, but that person can help you stay on track. Um, it's like an accountability partner. And that's another, another thing that's, that's helpful. Um, another thing is instead of, um, having a long-term goal and then, forgetting about it until the last minute, make the the reward or the payoff of that goal, bring that into the future. So visualize it, have a picture, um, you know, put different pictures each day of the week to remind you, oh yeah, I need to be working on that next step towards that goal because when I get that goal, I'm going to get this, um, you know, positive outcomes. So um, there's a lot more we could say about all of this. Uh, I always just feel like I want to make these short, 
But the main point is you need to bring the, the future into the present by having external time reminders, breaking up your tasks into small manageable chunks, scheduling short breaks, having accountability and um, rewarding yourself and visualizing that reward. So I hope this, this was helpful to you. I uh, hope this was a motivational Monday. And if you're in my focus and flow group, you also get winning Wednesdays. So if you don't know about focus and flow, it is awesome. It's a paid Facebook group, but it's only $27 a month. And you get uh, you get double the amount of training um, from me. You get to interact with each other. You get resources. Um, I've done live Q&As, and I've got some other fun things planned for the holidays. So reach out to me uh, if you are interested, and I will give you the link to join that. And you can join today. Hope you have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye.